Exercise 2. Sears issues bonds with a par value of $166,000 on January 1, 2011. The bond's annual contract rate is 4%, and interest is paid semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st. The bonds mature in three years. The annual market rate at the date of issuance is 6%, and the bonds are sold for $157,007. Remember that there's an inverse relationship between the market rate and the selling price. When the market rate goes up, the bond selling price goes down. In this case, since the market rate is higher than the contract rate, the bond selling price is lower than par value. This bond is said to sell at a discount. The amount of the discount is the difference between the selling price and the par value. $166,000 par value minus the $157,007 selling price is an initial discount of $8,993. Number two, how much total bond interest expense will be recognized over the life of these bonds? Well, the simplest and most accurate definition of interest is it's the difference between what gets borrowed and what gets paid back. In this case, the total amount that we're going to have to repay is six payments of $3,320. The $3,320 is calculated by taking 4%, the contract rate, multiplying it by the par value, $166,000, and dividing by two payments per year. Over the three-year period, there will be six payments of $3,320, followed by that lump sum payment equal to the par value, $166,000. Total repayments on this debt, $185,920, minus the amount that Sears was able to borrow, $157,007. Total interest expense is $28,913. Requirement 3 asks us to use the straight line method to amortize the discount for these bonds. The straight line method takes total bond interest expense and allocates it evenly per period the carrying value of bonds always moves toward the face value. The carrying value of these bonds begins at $157,007. And over the three-year period, the carrying value will increase to $166,000, a total increase of $8,993, the amount of the discount. The straight line method says that that movement toward the face value, the par value, is an even dollar amount per period. So we'll take the $8,993 discount, divide it by 6, and the carrying value of these bonds will increase by $1,499 per period every six months. Similarly, total bond interest expense, $28,913, will be allocated evenly over the six periods. So now let's prepare that amortization schedule. The amortization schedule shows the change, the movement of the carrying value toward the face value. The carrying value of these bonds begins at $157,007, an $8,993 discount. At the end of the first six-month period, we're going to amortize the discount, which means we're going to reduce the amount of the discount by $1,499. $8,993 minus $1,499 drops the discount to $7,494. And as the discount gets smaller, the carrying value gets bigger. Since we subtracted $1,499 from the discount, we add $1,499 to the carrying value. $166,000 minus a $7,494 discount is a carrying value of $158,506. December 31, 2011, we reduced the discount by an additional $1,499. The unamortized discount is $5,995. And again, as the discount decreases, the carrying value increases. $166,000 minus $5,995 is a carrying value of $160,005. At the end of period 3, we amortize an additional $1,499, dropping the unamortized discount to $4,496. And as the discount gets smaller, the carrying value gets bigger. We subtracted $1,499 from the unamortized discount and added $1,499 to the carrying value.
December 31, 2012. The unamortized discount is dropped by an additional $1,499 to $2,997, increasing the carrying value by $1,499 to $163,003. At the end of period 5, the unamortized discount is dropped to $1,498 and the carrying value has increased to $164,502. And at the end of the period, the end of the three-year term, the balance in the unamortized discount account always has to be zero. So even though we try to subtract 1,499, we can only subtract 1,498. That dollar difference is due to rounding. The carrying value at the end of its term will always equal the par value, 166,000.